Hello everyone and welcome to KWT's Microsoft Outlook Journal Entries module. Uh, journal Entries is a little used feature of Microsoft Outlook, but it can come in really handy um, in certain situations. So it's something you should be aware of and think about whether it fits your requirements or not. So journal entries is a way for you to document interactions with, with clients, with vendors, um, with anybody uh, outside of your organization or even within your organization. And this can include meetings, phone calls, uh, even internal discussions about a client, anything that would help you with future interactions with that client, with that vendor, with that contact. Uh, it can be a way of implementing a very simple CRM. It's a customer relationship management program uh, by using Outlook. Um, CRMs are very common these days and you can buy full-blown CRM solutions, but you may not need that kind of functionality where journal entries within Outlook may be all you need to keep track of information about clients all in one spot. So you can use it over your own personal contact list uh, but it's often even more useful when you're collaborating with a team. So you have a shared contact list. It may be all your clients, all your vendors, and you want all members of your team uh, to be able to share that information. And, you know, it's one of those things where you may have an interaction with, say, a vendor, if you're in a purchasing department, and you forget to tell your team members, the other members of the purchasing team, about that interaction so that the next time they're talking to the vendor, they're not even aware of what you've talked about. Whereas if you have this type of feature built into your system and it's shared, that person can quickly bring up the journal entries related to that vendor and see what those last few interactions were, see what notes that may have been shared, uh, about that particular vendor or customer um, and so they're up to date and they know what's going on even as they're talking to the person on the phone. It hasn't been used by many people in the past I think because of the abundance of true CRM modules that are out there that you can purchase uh, but it does mean that by uh, version Outlook 2013, they kind of moved it out of the way. So it's not a separate option, but you can find it uh, under the folders view, um, or you can add it to your uh, customizable ribbon or to the quick access toolbar to, uh, to find it when you need it. Um, the other reason uh, you may want to use it is if you're billing time and you want to bill your time to the client. So if you're professional services and all the time that you spend working specifically for a client needs to be tracked and billed, this is actually a way that you can use to track that time. And it has timers and so on that you can do it. So if you're doing that, you want to keep this journal open all the time. So you can open it in a separate Outlook window. So you have your standard Outlook where you do your email, your calendars and everything else, but you have a separate Outlook window just for your journal entries so that you're constantly updating them and letting it track your time as you work through your day. So once you have your journal pane opened, uh, you can create a new journal entry at any time. You can associate a journal entry with a specific contact using your address book. So that could be, as I say, a vendor or a client. And you can also introduce a bunch of other information about each journal entry, including the duration, uh, the type of contact it is, the company that it relates to, uh, and so on. And those things all make it easier for you or your teammates to coordinate and to organize those journal entries uh, so you can find them quickly when you're dealing with that same client or contact at a future date. Once you have those journal entries in place and you're viewing them, there's two types of views. There's a timeline view, which shows you each of those interactions over a period of time, or there's the entry list view, which is more useful for, uh, okay, who talk to this particular client, what notes are there about this client, perhaps before you reach out to them so that you are up to date on everything that has happened with that particular client before you talk to them. That way you know if there's an outstanding issue with them, you're up to speed on it. You can perhaps reach out to your colleague who had that contact with the client 
and find out the details before you ever pick up the phone and call the client. Um, certainly when there's crises, you want to be as fully informed as possible uh, to help defuse a situation before you ever get on the phone with the, with the client. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Uh, as I say, journal is not obviously available um, through the ribbons, uh, but you can get to it through the folders pane. Uh, you will see a journal folder uh, in here. There it is. And it will bring it up like that. Now you can open it in a new window so that you get a separate journal window uh, available to you at any given time. The other thing you can do is add it somewhere up here in your ribbons. You can customize your ribbons and there's a whole other module on that. Um, or you can add it to your quick access toolbar up here so that I can bring it up at any time uh, and have it available uh, at hand. And again, from here, if I want to open it in a new window, I can certainly do that. So now I have a journal window. I go back to my original one and put it back to email so that I have it available. But this journal window can stay open through the day and that's really handy because of some of the features of journal. So here I have a number of uh, interactions that I've put in, uh, but I'll show you what it looks like to create a new journal entry. Um, so perhaps I have created I need to create a journal entry uh, for a phone call that I had with a client um, about an order. Um, so that I just put some text in under subject um, about the March order. Uh, and if it's a phone call, I can put in how long that particular phone call took. So maybe it was about 15 minutes. Um, it was related to XYZ company. And uh, because I'm talking about an order, let's say that's a vendor. And uh, I can put some notes uh, and I can even make these notes as I'm talking to the person on the phone and, uh, you know, say the, the March order may be delayed uh, and that, uh, you know, John will get back to us by Friday to let us know what the status is of that particular order. And I can even go to the address book and find John and add him. So there's additional information in here about that particular journal entry. And when I save it, it shows up in my view and you can see I've got John there and I've got the company name, I've got the duration uh, and the date and the time that this particular interaction took place. Now, a journal entry doesn't have to be a phone call. It can be just a note you want to make. So it may be that you had a discussion with your team members uh, about the XYZ company. So we want to uh, put it in there as the company name. Uh, and maybe it was a quick 15, 10 minute talk that we had um, and a discussion about the viability Ooh, ability of, the comp of XYZ. And, you know, maybe there was a news article about them um, that makes us wonder if we can continue to buy from them in the future. Maybe they're moving their office and we don't know if they can still uh, accommodate the orders that we want. So you can put things like that in there. So now as your other team members, if they have access to this same shared journal, if you've set it up that way, can easily go in here and search by company and say, okay, I'm about to reach out to XYZ, what's going on with them? Oh, somebody had a phone call with them and I can look at the details of that and see um, what was discussed. And then, oh, there's discussion about viability. Hmm, maybe we should be looking at a different vendor uh, instead of XYZ. So it's a way to bring everybody up to speed on what's happening with that particular company. Now, the different views, this is an entry list, and as with any other views within Outlook, you can change the settings. Um, we can, you know, change that group by, so instead of grouping by company, I'll just leave it at none and put them all back in as one. I can add filters, so maybe I only want to see um, company. I can add the fields all fields, all journal fields, that's what I want, all company uh, contains XYZ and add that to the list. So 
I can make use of those views and the view settings to narrow down the journals because the journal entries can get um, very numerous and you know you want to be able to filter and group and sort them appropriately um, to make sure that you can narrow down exactly what it is you want to see. Now the other type of view that you can have is a timeline view and it will show you sort of all the things that have happened over time um, given a particular company or just all your interactions um, all together. The entry list tends to be a little more useful just because it's a little more flexible in terms of searching or, um, or sorting um, and, and grouping them together in certain ways. You can also categorize journal entries if that makes sense for you um, for different types of um, tasks to be sorry, different types of journal entries to be grouped together so that you can then categorize, uh, sorry, group or sort by category to help you track them down as well. Now, as I said, sometimes you have to bill your time back to a client. So you can actually keep journal uh, list open all day and every time you move from one task to the next or a phone call, you can start a journal entry and actually start a timer. So if I'm working on a task for a particular client, uh, maybe I'm creating the requirements document for a particular client and I'll put uh, the client name in there. Oops. Or I could add uh, the stakeholder um, from my address book and maybe just a note to myself that I've completed the requirements document. So this is not a phone call, this is a task. So I can put that in as a task and I let that timer run as I go away and I work on the documents and I'm just going to leave this for a minute so you can see it. As time goes by it will track that duration for me. So if you get in the habit of doing this, so every time you go off to do something you start this, you start the timer, you go off and do your work and when you're done your work you come back to the journal entry and you can see now it's gone up to one minute. Now, obviously if you've gone off to do a whole document and by the time you come back, this could be 30, 40, 50 minutes, but I've assigned it to a client and I can now say pause timer. I'm done with that task for today and I save and close it. So later on, when I'm putting together my billing or your admin assistant is doing the billing, they can go in and say, okay, all the billing for client A, um, this week and it can be all listed right here. They can add up the time and bill them based on that. Now of course when you do work um, where you're billing your clients for your time you also often have to do administrative work that does not get billed to a particular client. So you want to make sure that you know if you need a journal entry for doing your expenses because you don't necessarily bill that back to any particular client um, you can start the timer as you're doing your expenses, uh, put it in as a task, but then under address book, you can have a general uh, account that you want to associate it with, or you could put in general under company. Just something that triggers it that this is not billable time and this will just be uh, included under general, under general expenses. Um, so, but it is a way for you at the end of the day, you could group your journal entries by the day and make sure that you have put in eight hours if that's the kind of thing that you need to track. And certainly out of those eight hours, how many of those eight hours were billable? So this is really important for people who provide professional services. And again, there's all sorts of apps and programs that you can purchase that help you track your time but this is a really simple way to do it and if you get in the habit of it it's very simple to just go okay i'm moving on to a new task journal entry start the timer off you go and you just have to put in a little bit of information to make sure that it gets categorized correctly um, later on so there you go that's journal entries it's not something that everybody's going to use, but I thought it was worth making sure that you're aware that it's out there 
and take a look at it. And if it's something that you think would be useful to you, please do uh, try it out and see if it works for you. That ends this module.